So recently, I found a, uh, a person on Tib Community that had an interesting use case. They, at first, I was concerned that they were trying to use um, uh, continuous data on one axis and categorical data on another to, um, in, in which case, in general, that approach should probably be done with a bar chart. And you can actually see um, she took my suggestion and created a bar chart here. But then she also showed exactly what she was really looking for. And, you know, a after getting a little deeper into what she was trying to accomplish, she was lo really looking for a timeline that had different markers along it and then was sorted by, um, <clears throat> I guess, the length of each one of these timelines. And so, really, that's not something that you would do with a, uh, with a bar chart. Uh, we did, she was actually taking an approach initially of using a scatter plot, and I, I think that in the end that's the right way to do it. So, um, <clears throat> to recreate something that she's looking for here, where um, by patient number she has the length of the overall days in this particular record set, and then she has these points along the way that would be of these interrupts, and then she has two different categories of the end marks, right? End mark one and end mark two, or end marks. I guess really this is uh, end mark one, end mark zero. So um, I wanted to show the way that I kind of took a crack at recreating this stuff. And the first thing is, you, if you need if you need to start from zero every single time on a scatter plot, and you still want to be able to draw a line then you'll actually need to have records for each zero. So in this particular case, I'm actually going to start up Excel. So I'll bring that on screen. And for each patient number, which I think is 1001 through 1007, so I'll just do Actually, patient number 1001 through 1002, and let's just drag that down. All right. And then we also have an interrupt. And I just need the zero values for each one of these. Alright, uh, okay. So let me go ahead and add the rows there. So we'll go to Tools, excuse me, go to Insert, Add Rows from Clipboard. And patient number, uh, let's see, next. Patient number is a string, match selected, interrupt, match selected, and finish. Okay, and so now we've got our extra rows here that have our, our, our zero, and <coughs> after that, there, we're going to kind of break this into two, three pieces really. We're going to define what the markers need to be, and then we're going to um, create some ranking so that we can actually put these in the order of the uh, the length of each one of these and then finally we're going to plot that all onto a, a, a scatter plot so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a calculated column that's going to give me the markers so it's going to be a case statement and if you take a look at this data in more detail, you'll find that when overall days is equal to um, the interrupt, then that would be an endpoint, and end mark. is equal to zero, then 
end mark should be end mark zero. Our market type should be end mark zero. When let's just copy and paste the whole same thing. When this is one, then it's one. Now when interrupt is equal to zero, then I'm going to call that a start mark. And else, we're going to call it an interrupt. We'll end that. And we'll call that a marker category. And now we can show that column. Alright, good. So now we have these different categories for each one of our markers in this data set. The next thing I need to do is worry about this whole idea of ranking these in the correct order. And so it seems like everything's ranked by um, either the overall days or the interrupt, and it's, I'm assuming it's, the, it's ranked by the maximum interrupt. So I'm going to insert a new calculated column. And I'm going to say that, give me the max of the interrupt. And then I want to do that for each individual patient number. So we'll go ahead and say over patient number. Let's say, call this the max interrupt. And so now you can see for each patient number, you can take the maximum of this particular column. So now we want to be able to rank that. So if we insert another calculated column, we'll do rank of max interrupt. interrupt rank. And you can see here it has the same ranking for any time it has the exact same number and that essentially gives us an order. So now that I've done that I need to kind of match that up with each one of the patient numbers so I can insert another column ranked patient numbers. Uh, let's just keep it a little bit consistent. And for that, I'm going to do the interrupt rank. Along with, well, let's actually put it like that. then do a trim on the patient number. There we go. And so now that I've done that, um, I have pretty much everything I need to create a, uh, a line uh, scatter plot that recreates the scenario here. So I'm going to create a new page, create a scatter plot. Along the bottom, I'm going to do the interrupt. And along the side, along the, uh, the y-axis here, I'll do the ranked patient. And then I'm going to go to edit. And let's go to column properties.
rank patient number, sort order. Uh oh, I got something wrong. Hmm. I paused the recording just there. Um, I think I might have figured it out. So I am going to go ahead and column properties. And I'll delete this. And I'll delete this. All right, and I think what's happening here is this max interrupt over patient number. Um, I think that there's actually some uh, some white space in front of the patient number that is in the original data, but not the ones that I added. And since the ones that I added didn't have white space, I think it's seeing them as different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay, apply here. That's fine, but I'm going to insert a trimmed patient number column. So I'll do trim of patient number, trimmed patient number. All right. And I'm just going to check that. Yeah, you can actually see here patient number itself is, uh, you know, it's got things repeated, which wouldn't make any sense because this is always breaks down to all the unique pieces, but then this one doesn't. So, now that I've done that, I'll go to column properties again, and I'll edit this column, and I'm going to say instead of patient number, I'm going to do trimmed patient number. There we go. And now, I should be able to insert oops insert a calculated value and all right we need to do the uh, we need to do the ranking that's the first one okay great so rank Let's do here. Rank max interrupt. Interrupt ranking. There we go. Back on track. All right, so we have our interrupt rankings again. And now we're going to insert another calculated column. going to interrupt ranking and then this it's going to be the trimmed patient ID there we go ranked patient ID all right and now we can use rank patient ID. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so now let's color by the. Oh, um, uh, we'll we, we'll remove color for right now. We're gonna shape by that marker category, and based on based on this right here, we're gonna say that if it's got a end marker of 1, it's that. If it's got an end marker of 0, it's that. If it's an interrupt, it's that. If it's a start marker, we'll put it like that. So then, we're going to go ahead and add a line connection, and the line connection is going to be by um, ranked patient ID. And then what I, what I what I always like to do 
you know, having these colors is is good. I like the the idea of having a, a separate color here, and then you can either do something like this, where we actually color by all of the uh, the different markers. So let's say uh, marker type, and that that might be a good way to do it. But I think what's interesting here is that you have these, you know, you kind of have these outliers here where there's an interrupt after the end point, which is probably where we're trying to um, to trying to see something here. Um, so, you know, this is probably one of those situations where you know you can actually add that extra layer. So maybe we want to say. Um, you know, if these if these particular pieces are greater, have this particular marker, for instance, is a um, uh, is larger than the endpoint, then we want to give that its own comic kind of coloring. So we go to properties, colors, and we can just do a custom expression right away. We could also create a cu calculated uh, column for this, but I would just say. Yeah, let's just say that if overall days is less than the interrupt, oops, overall days less than interrupt, as Give it a nicer look. There we go. So now we can do something like this, where if it's a start mark, it's always going to be black. And if it's an interrupt mark that is gr uh, greater, then maybe we want that as, say, you know, yellow. And if it's not, then it's say blue and if it's an end mark it's always red all right you know we might want to clean up some of the lines so line connection maybe just make that a little bit thicker yeah let's probably leave the legend but maybe Let's go to properties, go to legend, and hide a lot of the stuff. The only thing I usually leave is color by. And I usually set that to just be like that. Although I guess maybe in this case, what might be more appropriate is the marker by. Uh, no. Let's just leave color by. All right. Oh, we uh, we still didn't order these in the correct order, but you can notice now that because we have these in a um, you know in an order that would make some sense, we can go to column properties, ranked patient ID, sort order, and just do natural sorting. Now that puts it with the highest one at the top. So let's go ahead and reverse the axis. Uh, reverse scale. And there we go. Alright, so hopefully uh, this showed you a bunch of different tricks. This one was, uh, was relatively difficult for me to figure out. Um, just because there's a lot of different things you need to take into consideration. Um, but uh, hopefully this is useful certainly to the person who posted it on Tib Community and to anybody else who wanted to learn, you know, kind of a, a couple of different techniques. So um, thanks again and let me know what else you want to see. Cheers.